Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. I'm getting back to you a little bit slower because we had to get back in gear with school. And uh, so anyway, we're we're getting everything uh, worked out. And as we're doing that, um, getting back into the doors that we were talking about, the doors of the God and how he opens doors and how he closes doors and we're so thankful to him sometimes we don't see um, the Thanksgiving that we need to have when he shuts a door that we don't need to walk through sometimes we may even grieve over it but um, as we see God's plan unfold before our eyes we begin to see that God has a specific plan and a specific purpose for the doors that he opens and also for the doors that he closes so we just we're just going to have a, a heart of thanksgiving that we need to have to God every single day and and a way to keep that for me the secret of of having thanksgiving for being an uncertain amount of time for me now it's been 18 months for our family that we've been going through a period of uncertainty and and just transition after transition after transition and and haven't really um, seen the things that we really want to see just yet come to pass we know that God is faithful and so I've stayed on my knees before God during this 18 months just faithfully on our knees in prayer, reading God's word faithfully every day, remembering what Jesus has done for me on the cross, and living and walking in that freedom and that joy of the Lord, which Nehemiah said is our strength. And so as we do that, we can we can praise God for the open doors and we can praise him for the closed doors because he he is the author of all things good in our life and we just keep on praising him no matter what's taking place no matter what we're facing no matter what we're going through so we're going to look at today the cross as the door of life and Jesus said he was the door I am the door and he is the life and so as we look at the cross I really want to look at 2nd Corinthians verse um, chapter 5 verse 21 which says for he Jesus hath made himself to be sin for us that knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him So, you know, Jesus laid down his life, one that knew no sin. He was sinless, perfect in every way that he could be. He laid down his life for you, for me, so that he could become sin for us. He laid his life down. He went through the separation of being separated from the Father because of our sin, not because of his sin, because he didn't commit any sin, but he took the weight of the sin sin of mankind on himself and became that door of life that on that cross that symbol stretched out as really a door because he is the door and he was making a door for us to walk through to be with God the Father and he's the only way we can have that relationship with God today he's the only way that we can have that one-on-one personal relationship with him is to come through Jesus to go to the Father on behalf of us. He is our intercessor. He is our good shepherd. John 10, 14 records this. He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. If you know Jesus and he knows you, you're his sheep. He's your shepherd and you're going to know the things that he wants you to do. You're going to know the good doors that he wants you to walk through and you're also going to recognize the doors that he doesn't want you to go through. So John 15, 13 states this, that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's exactly what Jesus did for you and for me. I don't know very many people who would be willing to do that. There are many courageous men and women on this earth that have laid down their lives for their friends. Um, And I call those people patriots. uh, Those people that serve our country every day. They put their lives on the line. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for their, their sacrifice that they make. But there's one that did that for all mankind. He did it for everyone. And that was Jesus. He laid his life down. And he 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 chose to lay it down he didn't just he didn't just say well I'm just gonna do this you know this is not gonna mean anything he did it because he knew that it would last for eternity for you and for me for every sin for everything that we would ever face for anything that we would ever go through Jesus made a way of escape through his death on the cross for us and I love what Jesus says here I'm gonna go to John 15 if you want to go there with me he says that verse 16 He says this. Well, let me back up. Let me go back to verse 12 of of chapter 15 of John. He says, This is my commandment, that you love one another. 
hope that you're loving people in Christ today. As I have loved you. That means that you have to love people the way Jesus loved you. Jesus forgave you. He forgave you of whatever you've done. And we have to forgive others. We have to extend that love and that gratitude to them. He says, Greater love hath no man than this. Then he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, we show the love of God by loving people that are unlovable. He says, Henceforth I call you not servants. God doesn't call us a servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. You are a friend of God today. He calls us friends. For all these things that I've heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And this is what I love. You have not chosen me. Some people didn't chose, they haven't chosen Jesus today. But he says, I've chosen you. I've chosen you and I've ordained you that you should go and that you should bear forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask of the Father in my name that he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. So Jesus has given us so many wonderful details here you know, to, to help us realize that some of us didn't chose we didn't choose this life <laughs> we didn't choose the things that we would do but God chose us he chose us before the foundation of the world he chose you to do something for him whether you even know it whether you've even realized it or, or done anything for God yet he has chosen you for such a time as this he has chosen you to do something for him and all we have to do is respond to his invitation to say, I've chosen you, now take up your cross and follow me. And, and that's a big step, isn't it, to do that, to choose to follow Christ wherever that may take you, wherever that choice may take you, to say, Lord, I surrender all. I, whatever you want me to do, I'm available for your service. You know, and as I think about the door of life that the cross is to all of us today, and, and I don't want to even think about where I would be without that open door that, that God provided through his son today. But there were several things that Jesus spoke from the cross that will really help us see a lot of things about the Father here. He says at the ninth hour, Matthew 27, 46, there were seven things spoken by Jesus from the cross. The first thing was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus felt the entire weight of the sin of the world on him at that time. He had never been separated from his Father. He'd never been separated from the presence of the Lord. And you know what? I, I don't ever want to feel what that feels like to be separated from God. I've, I've never been separated from him. I've known him in salvation since I was eight years old and got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 16. So I thank God that I never had a time when I ran from God or I was away from God or I rejected him. I know that's not everyone's story, but that's my story and I'm very thankful for that story. But Jesus was letting us know here that when we're separated from God, that sin separates us, but that he is the one who stood in the gap so that we don't have to be separated from him, that, that he was our intercessor and still is. Luke 23, 20, uh, 34 records Jesus saying the second say, statement from the cross, which was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even then, even on the cross, Jesus was interceding for those who had transgressed against him, even those who had put him on that cross. Will you do that today? Will you intercede today for your enemy? Will you intercede for those who don't love you? Will you intercede for those who need Jesus today? Um, you know, this was foretold by Isaiah, and Jesus fulfilled that prophecy by saying those words, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And then the third thing he spoke from the cross was, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. There were two options offered on the cross. If you notice, there were two thieves. And these are representative of each one of us. We all have two choices we can make. We can choose paradise with Jesus, or we can choose hell and be um, condemned by our sin. But Jesus offered both those men an opportunity. He offered them both the invitation to come and be with him in paradise if they would just believe that he was the Son of God. That's all they had to do was believe upon him. And, and he offered the one who accepted it. The one said, the one accepted responsibility. You know, there's a lot of people today, they don't want to accept responsibility for their actions. They don't want to say when they've done wrong. And, and those people will continue in, in that same cycle of sin and they'll break hearts and they'll hurt people 
and most of all, they'll hurt themselves and hurt God. But when you choose what this one man, the thief on the cross, said, you know what? I deserved what I'm getting here. I was a criminal. I was a murderer. I was, I did bad things. I deserve to be here. But this man, Jesus, he did no wrong. He didn't deserve to be here. And so he was saying, you know, I take responsibility. I take responsibility for what I've done. And when he did that, Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. You have repented of your sin. You have chosen me. You have, have seen the true me. You have seen me as a savior. You have seen me as what I want you to see, you, see me as, which is the truth, the life and the way. Praise God. And then the fourth thing he spoke from the cross was, Behold, woman, here is your son, and here is your mother. He spoke that to John, the beloved uh, apostle, who was the only apostle who was at the foot of the cross with his mother Mary. And he entrusted her. Even on the cross, Jesus was thinking of others. Even on the cross, he was thinking of provision and making a way for his own mother. And he was making a way for you and for me. That is the compassion of our God. This is who he is. He loves us. He's always making provision vision for us. He's always making a home for us. He's always making a way for us. Even in his dying, even in his suffering, he was thinking of you and me. Praise God. I, I'm touched by that today. I'm moved by that today to know that I have a God that loves me that much, that was thinking about me even while he was suffering, even while he was hurting. And then it, uh, the fifth thing he said was, I thirst. John 19, 28 records that. And this was a prophecy out of uh, Psalm 69, 21, where David recorded this, to thirst after the things of God. Um, and, you know, after hanging there for three hours, he gave up his life, Jesus did. Then this was his plan from the very beginning, you know, for him to say, I thirst, and he was the life giver. He was, he, he told people over and over, he told the woman at the well, you know, I'm the living water. And I believe he was reminding this as, of the cross, you know, when you have sin upon you, you're going to thirst. You're going to keep on thirsting. Your thirst is never going to be quenched. But when you accept Jesus, the river of life, the giver of life, the water that never shall run dry, you won't ever have to say, I thirst for anything else. You will be satisfied in Jesus today. And the sixth thing he said, it's the most powerful words I believe that Jesus ever spoke, was, it is finished. Whatever you have had to go through, whatever you're facing, Jesus made a way for you. He said, it is finished. Hell, death, the grave were defeated with those three words spoken. He's saying, I paid the total debt that was owed you. I've paid the total debt for your healing. I've paid the total debt for your mind to be right. I've paid the total debt for you to be delivered and to have the eternal home of heaven. I have paid all debts. All debts are paid. When you accept me, your stamp's paid in full. Hallelujah. It is finished. Tell the enemy today that Jesus says, it is is finished. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, Jesus says, I've already took care of it. I've already made a way for you. All you have to do is receive it and believe it and repeat it daily in your heart, in your mind. It is finished. The devil can't harm me. I belong to God. Praise God. And the seventh thing he said was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit in Luke 23, 46, which was another reflection back from Psalm 31 where David spoke again about committing committing his life and his and into the hands of God. So as we look at these these beautiful statements that Jesus made, you know, even in death, we can know that our spirit is belonging to God. We can we, we can have full assurance, we can have full peace. We can have a knowing that no matter what happens, that we belong to Christ today. So I hope that these have encouraged you to know that the Lord is with you, that he is making a way for you. Um, and I want to finish with one more statement um, that I can find. And this is going to be in Philippians. And that's my puppy snoring back there. Philippians chapter 2. And if you'll turn there, verse 1. And it just, it's just simply reminding us here, Paul is simply reminding us of the joy of the Lord being our strength and that he can help us through whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, no matter what it is, big, small, he has us in the palm of his hand. And he just says here, 
at chapter 2 of Philippians 1. It says, If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done in strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let us each esteem the other better than ourselves. Look not every man to his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind? Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus did all these things for us. He lowered himself to come down from heaven, giving up all the glory of heaven, to come down to be a human just like you and me, a common person. Being found in the fashion, he humbled himself. He became obedient unto death. He laid down. He didn't have to. He could have got up off that cross and took all his authority right back up. But he chose willingly to be obedient, it says, unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath it highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, listen to this, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father today. You know, we have that hope today. That hope lives inside you, and it lives inside me. And I am so thankful for this hope that we have today through Christ, our open door, that he laid down his life on that cross for you and for me. And I'm thankful for that open door that he provided, the door that would open up everything. It changed everything 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 was changed when Jesus opened up the door of the cross and he laid on it as that perfect sacrifice his blood just as we think back to the door of the Passover door Jesus was on that cross as the Passover lamb he bled out and that blood flowed down just like that blood flowed down those doorposts Jesus blood flowed down for you and for me and he took those 39 stripes across his back for every sickness, every disease, everything that we would face. He took it care of it all. He did. He took care of it all. He paid it all. That's why he said, it is finished. Believe his word today. Believe that it's finished. Believe that he's took care of your situation and that he's going before you and he's making a way where there seems to be no way. If this has helped you today, please like, please share, please subscribe. Share it with some friends. We, we so appreciate your comments. Leave us a comment. Let us know you were here. God bless you and we'll see you soon.